Everyone who keeps telling me to upgrade my furnace, you're getting your wish. I'm building a burner right now. Here is phase one, sort of. The burner I'm building is based on one on BackyardMetalCasting.com called the Oliver Upwind Burner. It seems like the simplest, cheapest way to do it. And uh, someone in the comments asked if I could do it and do it inexpensively and simply because he wanted to copy it. Uh, and that's a great reason to do it. Also, I'm very simple and cheap, so it seemed like the perfect option. By cheap, here's what I mean. I have my buy list here. This isn't everything, obviously, uh, but we have a 1x12 black pipe, 1 inch, 4 bucks. Gas valve, 4 bucks. Let's see, this was 350. This, 76 cents, 79 cents, 49 cents, 68 cents, 59 cents. This is pretty cheap. It's under 20 bucks. The only other things I needed were uh, a regulator. I got it. I ordered it on Amazon. They didn't have it on the shelf. And a fitting, like a conversion fitting. All of these are 3 8 inch NPT thread. That's national pipe thread. These are all, these are both one inch. But the regulators and everything have flare fitting, so I got an NPT to flare uh, fitting converter thingy. Adapter, that's the word I'm looking for. But this was under 20 bucks, and if I'm honest, you don't need this. This isn't, this is like I was going to put it on the end and then like smooth out in here to kind of make a flare. You really don't even need that. The guy who built, who did the, the tutorial put like a piece of metal pipe, you know, so it looked like a flare. So that's like 350 that you don't have to spend. This is 12 inch. The design called for 7 inch. My store didn't have 7 inch. They had a 6, or no, they had a 4 and a 12 in stock. So I got the 12. I'll just cut it later, maybe. So you could conceivably get this part down uh, probably to 15 bucks or less. Like it, I, You don't really need this. Technically you have a, a regulator, but I wanted this to be like part of the thing. So if at any point I really needed to shut it off really quickly, I wouldn't have to run over to the regular and crank, 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 crank. I could just grab this and off. It's on, off. And very important, there are a lot of different brass valves out there. Make sure you get one that's a gas valve. This is a brass gas valve for all gases but oxygen. Don't know why. So all 3 8 inch NPT fitting. So this is a 90 degree. This is just a cap 3 8 inch thread. 2 inches, 3 inches, 4 inches. These are 3 8 inch pipe. I got all of these just at, at the store. I went to the store. This is the receipt. Uh, I have it folded up so you can't see the other stuff. Otherwise, people will be like, why did you buy cat food to make a propane burner? That's all the parts you need, plus an adapter, plus the regulator, and a propane tank, I guess. I already have a propane tank. First step, you see up close, the threads are kind of gross looking. I don't know why black pipe is always filthy. It's probably covered in oil to stop it from corroding or whatever. And you want to take a paper towel and clean all that out. So while I'm wiping these up, you might be wondering why I chose propane. There are a lot of options, uh, and propane isn't always the most popular. Some people suggested waste oil and all that. Well, I'm going with propane because I already have a propane grill, so it's available. And there are like propane tank vending machines even, so I can get it 24 hours a day. So let's say it's like Christmas morning and it really doesn't go well and I want to melt a bunch of stuff so I feel better, but I'm out of propane, I can get propane. And once the burner is finished and working, I'm going to design a furnace around the burner that will be bigger, tougher, and better insulated. So hopefully that'll help with the uh, copper and various copper alloys that I want to make and the stuff that I want to make. So things will go a lot smoother from here on out. Don't know why, but I started watching a lot of videos on Bronze Age stuff. There's a lot of cool looking stuff that people used to make cast in bronze. And I know where to get a lot of tin and I have a lot of copper. So that might not be, uh, might not be a bad idea to pursue. Okay, cleaned up. The main pipe that the gas is going to come out of is this one. You can have a cap on the end. You want to cap it if you're going to actually have an end. You don't want to like Try to jerry-rig a thing. You really don't want to put this on the end and just turn the valve off because that's not going to be great. So capped. This will slide through a hole on here and have a very specific hole drilled in it, a very precise number 57 number drill. So the design calls for a 7-incher uh, in 3-quarter inch. They didn't have 3-quarter inch on the shelf for some stupid reason. So here's a 1-inch. I'll just try to make it. I'll try to make it 7 inches. 
seven inches. Now I have to drill a hole big enough for this to go through. And it seems like the right size is 11 sixteenths, which is the second to last hole on this step drill. I'm just going to try to lay out about where I want to make the center of it, probably there-ish. First I'll use inappropriate tools to give me a dimple to hold the drill in place. Boom! Dimple. And now I shall attempt to drill straight. Huh. Plugging in the drill. Plugging in the drill will help. There we go. There we go. This would be a lot easier if I had a drill press, but I won't complain too much. I wonder if WD-40 makes a decent cutting lubricant. Vice here is pretty rusty. It could probably use a anti-crap coating. Ah, that was unexpected. Broke it right off. That's what I get for buying the Chinesium one. Well, this is the biggest drill bit I got. It's half inch. Boom! Half inch hole. That's not big enough, unfortunately. Alright, one side down, one to go. Actually, that's going to take far too long with a Dremel. How would I elect to worry about that later? I mean, see on the picture, the gas pipe is perpendicular to a row of holes on top and bottom. He says these side ones are not necessary. So if that's roughly perpendicular, the top of this is roughly perpendicular to that hole. I need 3 8 inch holes separated by 5 eighths of an inch. Alright, mark the location of this first one. Eyeballing it in front of the where the pipe will be. Put a sharpie dot there and then every 5 eighths of an inch after that. There. I seriously hope that's accurate enough. Guess who's coming back? Chinesium drill bit. Maybe this one won't be as bad. If not, it gets to die the same death as its brother. Wow. Bad drill bits are bad. There. I got all the holes drilled after much drilling and grinding and pain and crying. Now let's never speak of this again. Speaking of drilling holes, now we gotta drill one in the pipe that sprays out the uh, propane. Don't know what the technical term is for it. Spray pipe, the fire hole. We're going to use these extremely rusty number drills. Number drills are very precise. Uh, they go up, I mean this is like, I think this is a 62 or something, and this is a 40. So there are 22 different versions, all look tiny. But they're very, 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 very precise. We're going to use a number 57. The design calls for a number 57. I'm trying to place it right in the middle here in a divot that I made. Easy does it. This might take a while. I'm going real slow. And there we go. We are through. Didn't break despite being ultra rusty. Awesome. And now we're basically just in assembly mode. So, I get my parts together from all the dispersed areas. Eh? Yeah, I think that's all of them. Now we need this pipe thread stick. You may have seen like the Teflon tape that you wrap around the threads. What the Teflon tape does is it allows you, it, it kind of lubricates so you can get just a couple more turns. Because these are tapered threads, like I mentioned. So they'll kind of seal against themselves if you can get it tight enough. This does the same, only it doesn't have the tendency to bunch up and just kind of get spun off like Teflon tape can. Uh, but this also acts as a seal too, sort of. I'm not all that worried. This pipe is not going to hold constant pressure like a pipe in a house. You know, the, the gas pipes in your house cannot leak at all, or they slowly fill your house with gas. This will be outside. It will not have any pressure in it unless I'm using it. and. At that point, it's going to have this hole in it, so it's definitely going to be leaking. So you use this stuff, you kind of smear it on the male end of the threads. This is called the male end, female end, one goes into the other. Smear it on, nice and liberally, then crank this on. I'll clamp onto this and crank it down more later. Cool, huh? Alright, so, got it clamped down. With some pliers. I have a little extra there. You don't have to worry about that too much. Now this probably won't leak. This hole will, but that's a different story. Speaking of the hole, we gotta mark everything we can about this hole. So I mark the center where it is. And these are just to help me uh, 
place it directly in the middle, pointing where it needs to point. Now I wonder if you can see down there, there's a hole. Now this pipe blocks most of, the, of this pipe, but that doesn't matter. In fact, the instructions say he's capped off the back and it didn't change anything. Wow, those holes do not look even. So that's a really tight fit and it's not easy to move. That's why I was using the channel locks. The instructions said to drill a hole, tap it, and then have a set screw. I was thinking, I got a welder, I'll just like tack weld it, but it's so tight, I'm not going to do that now until I get the, the regulator and stuff and I can test it out. Now for the rest, pipe dope, Urgh. just finger tight for now, but I'm, I am going to snug them up later, so don't worry. Crumbly, crumbly pipe dope. Let's see, which way do I want this thing to go? Away? Towards? I don't think it matters. The adapter that I got is male to male, so if we pretend this is the, the adapter, this is female, the end of the regulator is female. Male goes into female, and then the regulator female will go into this, and then this will be the adapter. Uh, this isn't the adapter, this is just a sand in, so we're going to throw that out. There, clamped it down with some other tools. Now that is super snug. Flip this around, that'll go on here. This will be on, off. Fire goes that way. Last but not least, these threads. Doo, 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 doo. Well, there goes my adjustment. That's fine. Let's make sure this is good and tight. Fortunately for me, I shouldn't have, uh, probably shouldn't have drilled this hole until I clamped this down, but it got really tight, almost there. I was able to snug it up just a little bit, so this is on the opposite end of the hole. If I would have ended up here, I would have been in quite some trouble, maybe, but it worked out. You know, luck, luck is sometimes as good as planning. I'm, I'm just going to say that. Sometimes being lucky is better than planning. Now I'll adjust this again according to my marks. Good. Good. This goes on the end. And then maybe, I don't know, maybe grind the threads away. I saw someone do that once and it looked really cool. Because uh, so I, so, I don't know if that'll get in the way of the flame. But we can always give it a shot. It's also possible to just not use this and use like a different flare make out of sheet metal. I don't know. And then this is all extra, this stuff back here. So I'm thinking what I might do with this is use something to clamp onto that to hold it as like a mount, you know, because I don't want to clamp here over the holes. Clamp here would get kind of hot and toasty because this will be all fiery and junk. This should be like cool. <laughs> what the Amazon delivery guy brought me. Fancy, huh? Yes, as you may have guessed, this is a regulator. It is a zero to 30 pound regulator, fitting design for uh, the general propane grill you get at the store. And also this. So this is a tapered NPT to flare adapter. Yes, that's not very exciting, but there it is, the last part of the puzzle. So for this, I break out the pipe dope again Get it all up on there, yeah. Yeah, there we go. On the NPT side. Once I do that, I don't put it on the other. You do not put this on that. This is designed to help the thread seal. This, the threads don't seal. This seals. Now this, the flare fitting, it may look like an AN fitting, those uh, fancy things that people put on race cars. Well, it's not. Don't mix them up. Get a flare fitting, not an and fitting. The angle is different, and it won't work. It won't seal at all. Oh, wrong way. There we go. Speaking of not sealing at all. Do, 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 do. Nice and tight. All right, line up the hole by looking down the end. That seems pretty much dead center. Shouldn't say dead when playing with fire. That's, that's bad, uh, it's not bad mojo. What's the word I'm looking for? Long stainless hose. If I'm honest, the hose probably isn't long enough. I might opt for a longer hose in the future. Now I'm going to screw this end into here. It's important to note that this is turned off. This valve is off. This valve is off. You turn this one off by screwing it uh, the opposite direction of this. And the shutoff over there on the burner is also off. Everything is off. So nothing should be allowing the passage of gas. I know that sounded like a fart joke. It wasn't. It was not an intended fart joke. So here we go. Open. I have secured this in the vise and there's nothing flammable over here. I know it looks like my tools here are close, but it's actually pointing away from it a bit. One nice thing about this burner is the fire comes out of this hole 
this tube inside here. So you can light your lighting fire up through the hole. Kind of cool, huh? You don't have to get a, a striker and get a big woof out the front that burns your face off every time. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn this valve open and slowly open the regulator while holding this under here. So we'll crank the pressure up a little bit at a time so you can get a tiny pilot light first. We're not going for face melting. We're just going for a tiny flame. There we go. Oh, we got a light. This is on very low pressure. Let's see if we can crank it a little bit. Oh, there's a little more. More, more. More. That's a mighty big flame. And I'm gonna turn off the lights. There, dull lazy flame. Let's slowly crank it back up again. All right, I think that was successful. I think this qualifies as the coolest thing I've ever built. Uh, Cause it shoots fire. That's their only coolness can come of that. Also burning and death, but I'll, I'll keep the burning and death to a minimum. I have taken the regulator off, the regulator is shut off, that shut off is shut off, I guess it doesn't matter anymore, it's not even attached. Tank is shut off, so no propane in this thing anymore. Uh, I'm going to leave it sit on my bench, and I am going to go relax and dream of all the cool things I can burn with this. I mean all the responsible casting projects I will do very, very soon. Yes.